Heavenly Father, thank you for your We ask your blessings for this morning. We have a faith that is blessed. And renew us in the power of your Spirit. Give us faith that really understands what we believe, why we believe it, how we believe it. Give us the love to share it with all people. In Jesus' name, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all God's people said, Amen. All right, I want you to go again to paragraph 184. I just want to show you the differences, why we have the Nicene Creed. Now, you've got to be baptized. We're right on top of the Apostles' Creed there. Baptism. 184. Paragraph 184. Does everybody see that? Yep. yep. You can only be baptized not in the Nicene Creed. You've got to be baptized in the Apostles' Creed. Okay, why, why do you have to be baptized in the Apostles' Creed? So the 12 In the Apostles' Creed, there, this is everything you believe. It's our statement of faith. You cannot have a church that you vote on what you want to believe. As believers in Jesus, we believe in a theocracy, a government by God. But how many of people don't like that? I met a little bit of a challenge the other night. They said, no, we're not going to do it that way. And that's the problem with the Catholic Church, I was told. I went, <laughs> Now, the Nicene Creed is 325 A.D., so you put that in there, 325. And you could see the difference. See how they line up? And so you can see there in the Nicene Creed why it was written 325. And by the way, in 325, they came up with the word Trinity. So when the Jehovah's knock on your door, did they ever knock on your door? Oh, yes. Yeah. I am sending them all to your house tomorrow. <laughs> If your name begins with a T, I'm sending them to you. T and T. We're sending all the Jehovah's to you. <laughs> and they, um, they don't have the Apostles' Creed, nor do they have the Nicene Creed. Now, every Protestant denomination basically agrees with the Apostles' Creed. So, but what they've done, if you go to um, the Apostles' Creed, you go to... Um, the bottom there, which says, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church. See it there? Yeah. They change it. In the high churches, like the Lutherans, some Presbyterians, they'll keep the word Catholic in there, which means universal. But some have changed the word to Christian. Have you ever seen that? No. They, so they'll, they'll, they change the Apostles' Creed in that mark. Uh, so if you're, if you're ever visiting one of those churches and you read the Apostles' Creed there. And the, the Lutherans, the Presbyterians, they basically say this often. So this is what every Christian has in common with one another. Now again, you could see the difference is um, when you expand on, look at the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See on all the Trinity there? Everybody remember the Trinity? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Now, when you compare the two, you see there's a little more information on the Trinity. Did you see that? Each person in the Trinity? Yes? yes? When you get to the Holy Spirit, you see more information. The Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Now, put a little note there. If anybody knows anybody Greek Orthodox. You ever hear of the Greek Orthodox? Yes. Now... There are two reasons we are not united with the Greek Orthodox right now. They believe exactly what we believe, except, and it's so minor, that the average person in the pew, sometimes the average person in the pew is called Joe Sixpack. <laughs> the average person in the pew would not understand this, nor did probably the man behind the pulpit understand it either. If you look at right there, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, He has worshipped and glorified. Do you see that? Yes. So, we say the Holy Spirit, that's the reason why we're divided. Right there, that line right there. And the Son. So if you box in there, and the Son. In, in Latin, it's called 
How many ever heard of this expression, the filioque? Anybody speak Latin here? Anybody ever speak English? <laughs> Filio, which means the sun. Que means and. So, reason number one we're divided is because of that one line. He proceeds that the, the Spirit of God comes forth from the Father, and we say there, and the Son. They said, no. The Holy Spirit only comes forth from the Father. Oh. And we say, no. And the Son. So we call the expression filio, Son, Hue, and, and the Son. That's reason number one. Reason number two, and these are the only two reasons that separate us, is back in 1054 they started excommunicating each other. So the Pope excommunicated, I think his name was Leo X, excommunicated uh, the Patriarch of Constantinople, he excommunicated the Pope. <laughs> and uh, so, and when one of them got the excommunication, the other one was dead. So I mean, I don't know if it's still valid when he dies. So the second reason, if you know any Greek Orthodox, the second reason we're split is because they don't want the Pope to be above everybody else. They want what is called the five C's, S-E-E, -E, five different areas around the world then, and we're all equal as bishops, we all govern. So that's why I'll be right with you. That's why they want to go to Russia and meet these men and get them on board um, with Pope uh, Benedict and Pope John Paul II, they're, they're trying to bring them back. And then all of a sudden in 2000, remember in 2000, anybody alive in 2000? Yeah. They, said to, they said to the Pope, apologize for the Crusades. Why? And I'm like, the Crusades? I wasn't even alive at the Crusades. Because there was the, the Western Catholics went into Constantinople. This is in the 1200s. Anybody around in the 1200s? Some of you look like you aged a little bit, all right? <laughs> and what the Western Crusaders did was they went into Constantinople and raped the town and the women and everything else. It was very ugly. So that's what they said. Apologize for that. And Pope John Paul II, he had to say face with the church, so he did say for our sins. So I don't think he mentioned Constantinople in the 1200s. Yes? Uh, don't the Coptics and the Greek Orthodox have their own pope? Yes, they yes, they do. Yeah. How do they have their own pope? Pope means father. Yeah. So that's the difference. So I, I want to show you the Nicene Creed when we say it. We, we, we got to put this on what day? Sunday. Why do we say it on Sunday? Because it's our High Holy Day. And we want the full, this is the fullness of the Spirit. And so you can see an extra thrust on the Blessed Trinity. Now the cults that knock on your doors, they do not believe in the Trinity, right? The Jehovah's, the Mormons. And I told you before, there are some evangelical groups who uh, don't even mention ever during their services the Trinity. Questions? All right, I just want to show you that. Now, we're going to be delving into the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> now, being Catholic means you may not like this because we are free thinkers in here, aren't we? You may not like this, but we're told what to believe. Do you like to be told what to believe or you want to figure out yourself? Nowadays, people are making up their own religion and they're definitely making up their own Catholicism. How many of we make it up as we go along? One person was making up to me on Friday night as she was going along. Um, she was basically saying, you don't have to be baptized, you can receive communion anytime you want, whoever you are. And I said, it doesn't work like that. So um, she was incensed and I was incensed at each other, so she just walked into church and, and probably not gonna send me a Christmas card after all. <laughs> So we, we come back to uh, paragraph 145, where we start to say this article is called, I Believe. 
I, I'm glad that we, we go back to I believe because it's personable. And the creed was written credo. How many ever heard that word credo? Yes. Right, we, we get the word. What word do you hear in credo? Believe. I believe. Credo. Anybody study a language once in your life? Yes. Credo is I, I believe. believe. Okay, credo. Okay, creo is Spanish, right? I think I studied that a couple years ago. So we have, uh, when, we, when we look at belief here, what the church does is, 144, if you underline it there, to obey, paragraph 144, uh, uh, audire, to hear or listen to. So to obey means you've got to listen, to listen. And do you think a lot of people are listening today? I don't think so. And then they give us examples. Now, the church gives us examples in the catechism of people who listen. The first one is Abraham. And the Muslims like him. What do the Muslims call him? Ibrahim. So you have Muslim, a lot of Muslims, Ibrahim. Because they believe he was one of their ancient fathers. And I, I, was, I was in Nazareth. You ever hear of Nazareth? In the Holy Land? I was going into the church of the Nativity. Here's the wonderful church of the Nativity where Jesus entered the world. Outside there's a big, gigantic <coughs> Islamic banner destroying the de deity of Jesus and saying he's just a man and everything else. So I looked at that, I'm being incensed. I went, oh. And then they, what, what, what I never seen people of Islam do, you know how they dress those little brown, brown skirts of theirs and everything else. They're passing out flyers as they go along on their religion. And I was even more incensed. But right, right in front of the church, right smack, you can't miss it. They were attacking the deity of Jesus. Is it on the church? Bucket? No, they, it's a banner outside. Oh. Just, just here's the church right over here, oh, okay. and here's the banner right here. So as you're going in, you could not, because Nazareth right now is a Muslim town. So when they see these Christians from all over the world walking through, um, it's, it was all in English, uh, attacking the deity of Jesus. So I was a little incensed there. So we have, uh, when you say, I believe, the obedience of faith, we have people of faith. So the first one is right there, 145, the letter to the Hebrews, and it's great eulogy of the faith, that's, if you put in there chapter 11, chapter 11 is the great hall of faith. And uh, Israel's ancestors lay special emphasis on Abraham, says, by faith, Abraham, paragraph 145, obeyed when he was called to God a place he was to receive as an inheritance, and when he went out, not knowing where he was going. How many people would obey like that? You're told to leave. And you know what God says? Henry, no, Abraham, leave. <laughs> And, God, and Abraham said, where am I going? And God says, I'll tell you when you get there. How many would follow? <laughs> and then you take your wife, I bet, uh, you take your wife, Sarah. Remember, remember how Sarah got her name? You forgot already. Yeah. Okay. Her original name in Genesis 11 was Iska. Iska, Genesis 11, 29. God changed the name. Uh, how many have a pet name? Do you have a pet name for your Brian? Yeah. You do. Cupcake or, <laughs> or uh, <laughs> Sweetie Pie or Honey Bun or Tootsie or whatever else. Uh, I hear my brother call his wife Doll. 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 Henry, I can't wait to hear what you call me. <laughs> Betty. Betty. Uh, is it Betty Boop or something? <laughs> No, wait, wait, I want to make sure she hears me. I said Betty Jean. That's a Betty Jean. That's a middle name. Jean. So her original name was Iska, and then he loved her so much he called her Sarai. How many ever heard that word before? And Sarai, he said, my princess. It means my princess. So you could just see her, my princess. And then God said, no, 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 she's mine. So I'll call her Sarah. And, so he, and remember what's God's letters, Y, H, W, H. God says, I'll give her one of my letters. That's how we get the word Sarah. And then Abraham got the other letter. His name was Abraham became what? Abraham. Abraham. Do you got that? Mm -hmm. And so we could see here, uh, paragraph 146, Abraham fulfills this the definition of faith in Hebrews. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen because he kept journeying and journeying and journeying and journeying and out he goes. Paragraph 147, 
the Old Testament is rich in witness to his faith. The letter to the Hebrews proclaims this eulogy of the exemplary faith of the ancestors who received divine approval. So by faith. So we, we need people of faith. So when we're get, getting ready to go into the Apostles' Creed, the church says, let's look at some examples of people of great faith. And then, of course, I love paragraph 148, 149, the Blessed Virgin Mary. How many love Mary? Yeah. Now, does everybody know what the word Mary means? Okay, what's, what's, the, what's the original name of Mary in Hebrew? Mary. Mary. Miriam. 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 Okay. Miriam. And the word Miriam in Hebrew means bitterness. Isn't that a strange name for Mary? Yeah. Everything you know about Mary, you know, she gets the name bitterness. And Mary was the phenomenal white martyr. That means she suffered more than any person in the world outside of Jesus. And she was, she kept, how many know when you have a white martyrdom, you keep living. A red martyrdom, you go through suffering and you're dead soon, right? But not Mary, she just stayed in there and she lived to the ripe old age of 72. 72. Okay, she uh, had Jesus at the age of what? 14, 15? Her parents were dead at the age of eight. I told you you could look online. Did you look on it yet? The Gospel of James. It's about nine pages. You could read it before you go to bed tonight. The Gospel of James. It reads about, it's a nice reading. It's about her betrothal to St. Joseph. You ever hear St. Joseph? Mm -hmm. What does the word Joseph mean in Hebrew? Added to or the increase. So bitterness was married to the added to. <laughs> and then the name of Jesus is Yeshu, Y-E-S-H-U, and the word Jesus means what? Savior. Savior, bitterness, and added to. Those were the names of... And William, of course you want to know what the word William means. It means the armor. You weren't too impressed about that. Okay, as we go along. <laughs> Father, yes. You said eight years of age. The Blessed Mother was eight when her parents died. Yes, they're both dead. And who raised her after that? She was in. She was born in Jerusalem, and she lived in a a young lady's solidarity. So she was raised in a, a commune of women, and that's where she met Saint Joseph. Because when you say carpenter, how many know immediately? Here in America, we think just working with wood. No, no, construction. no construction. Right. So, uh, Saint Joseph. How many of Saint Joseph worked on the temple building for maintenance? And so Mary met Saint Joseph at the temple, on the temple building. And so when she was eight years old, both of her parents were dead. If you want to read about their engagement, you could read about online Gospel of James. Gospel of James. Okay, so you should read that. Uh, that's your homework, and give me a paper for next week. All right. <laughs> so if, if you if you want the background, you, you should get some background. And then Mary was raised that way, and then she moved up to Nazareth, which is about 90 miles, 90, 100 miles, 120 miles north. And then one one beautiful day, she was walking in her cave. They live in caves, and Gabriel walks through. Okay. And she's only about 12, 13 years old. She, she's just getting ready to go to modern day high school. <laughs> and um, she got, her plans were changed right away. Miss Pat. Father, is um, the Gospel of James where, how we know the names of the parents of yes. Mary? Yes, we know the names Joachim and Anna. Mm -hmm. Joachim, jo right? Yes. Joachim. Well, the reason why I say Joachim because in Hebrew there's no J's. It's always with a Y. So that's why I say Joachim. And there, there's some more information on that, Pat, when you look at Mary's genealogy. When you look at her father, it says her father's name is Eli. And so, wait a minute, that's not Joachim. It is Joachim. It's the same one. But I, I, I got to do a little study with that and show you how it's the same name. So Mary's genealogy is in chapter 3 of Luke. Joseph's genealogy is in Matthew chapter 1. Everybody know that? And you can see a lot of strange names on Mary's genealogy. Father, did she have siblings at all? Or? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. 
Sister Mary. Now, now here's a shocker. Sister Mary. Guess what her sister's name was? Mary. Mary. <laughs> yeah. If you, at the cross, how many Marys were there? Three. Mary, Mary, Mary. Now, does everybody know this? Let's see if you know your Bible. Mm -hmm. And then John. Three women, one man. The men were scared, weren't they? Yeah. Mary, all pure. The other Mary, the prostitute, all sinful. And then the Mary in the middle was her, her, uh, her sister. Mm -hmm. So, how many ever heard of Clovis? Yeah. Remember, he was the one that, oh, on, yes. the, on the Emmaus rock in Luke 24, so that was Jesus' relative, and so that was Mary's sister, Mary. You're the only ones on your block that know this. So where were your mothers in that year passing out names? You know, it sounds like George Foreman. Remember George Foreman? George, 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 George. Henry, are all your kids named Henry, 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 Henry? <laughs> did Henry did Henry name all the all the names or did you have a say in it? She named them all. She named them all? Alright. So let's look at the Virgin Mary, uh, paragraph 148. Okay? So Mary was born in Jerusalem. Do you know in Jerusalem, you know where she was born? She was born next to the pool where the man was, remember, waiting to get in? Mm -hmm. And he couldn't get in, he couldn't roll in. And they believe that the angel stirred up the water. Remember that scene in, in the gospel? Mary was born a few feet away from that. So if you wanted to see a location of where she was born. And then right now to commemorate, you go into this building and you go all the way downstairs and they have a beautiful little china doll where Mary was born. So it's so cute. I always say, hi, Blessed Mother. I just, so I, I was on the spot where Mary was born. And November 21st, um, we have her commemoration when she was presented in the temple. Remember that? You, know, you forgot about that already. All right, so we have, Ma we have Abraham, and the next paragraph, 148, the Virgin Mary most perfectly embodies the obedience of faith. By faith, Mary welcomed the tidings and promise brought by the angel, believing with God nothing will be impossible. Okay? And uh, she said, uh, this is called her fiat, let it be done according to your word. And put a star right there, let it be done according to your word. Does everybody know, as soon as she said, let it be done according to your word, that is the moment Jesus entered the world. That is the moment she got impregnated with Jesus. No man touched her. It's called the virgin birth. Okay. Now, to be a Catholic, you must believe in the virgin birth. Today, it's up for grabs. Somebody say, ah, oh, it really didn't happen that way. Yes, it did. You must believe in the virgin birth. Does everybody believe in the virgin birth? Yes. Yes. Okay, round yon virgin. Remember silent tonight? Mm -hmm. And there's a wonderful line in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 30, 31. It says that a woman will encompass a man. And you know what that means? There will be a virgin birth. There will be a virgin. So, to be a believer in Jesus, we must believe in the virgin birth. Okay, amen? amen? And I don't want to disappoint you. It wasn't you, okay? It wasn't you. <coughs> Nobody here is virgin born, right? There's only one virgin born. Why? We've got to know the fact that Jesus' birth was so extraordinary. So, I'll uh, put a little note there. Put a star where it says number 12. Put a star there. And it gives you the passage in the Bible. Uh, Luke uh, 1, 37, 38. That is the moment Jesus entered the world, okay? That's the moment. Now, when, when you, you and I, Lord willing, when we all go to heaven one day, does everybody realize Jesus will always have a body for the rest of his eternity? Jesus is always God. Did he ever have a beginning as God? No. no. He comes along. Mary, as soon as she says these words, boom, comes through her womb. He will always have a body. It's glorified, and everybody here, Paul says in Philippians 3.21, everybody here will receive a glorified body. Henry, can you imagine what you're going to You look great now. Can you imagine what you're going to you know, you know what your wife is going to say to you in a thousand years? Henry, is that you? Okay, can you imagine what she's going to say? Can you imagine what your wife is going to say about you? Henry, is that really you? You got hair. That's right. 
Can you imagine what we're all going to look like on that day, right? You get brand new bodies, you all dress in white, one, and don't get nervous, one size fits all, right? One size fits all. <laughs> so you, you see now, uh, paragraph 148, Elizabeth Greeter, blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her, and this is the birth of the Hail Mary. So do you know, every time you say Hail Mary, guess what you're saying? You're saying the Incarnation. See, Catholics do have a lot of Bible memorized. Mm -hmm. What do we say all day long? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Mm -hmm. Our Father who art in heaven. So how many know that you're, you're just giving out Bible passages? Is that all the Bible you know? Hey, if you got the Incarnation down and pray for your daily bread, you're doing pretty good. So um, we know a lot of Bible, but our problem is we don't know the numbers. Across the street, they know the numbers, but this side of the street, we have the menu. We know the context. We have the menu and the meal. Okay? They're still waiting for the meal across the street. So we got the meal here and the menu. And then it is for faith that all generations call Mary blessed. That's why we call her the Blessed Mother. How many remember years ago the BVM? Do you remember that? Yes. When I had nuns, remember when nuns were nuns? On my paper, I put J M J. Do you remember those J M J? Did they do that in the Philippines too? Did you put on top of your paper, especially when you took a test? J M J. Did you ever do that? Okay. You didn't have the sisters like I did, huh? And uh, and then we had to do these small little prayers. Jesus and Mary, I love you. Save souls. Do you remember that? You forgot those days. Oh, may those days come back. Those were great. And so Mary is called the Blessed Mother. Paragraph 149. Throughout her life and her last ordeal, when Jesus' son died on the cross, Mary's faith never wavered. She's called the white martyr, and she never ceased to believe in the fulfillment of God's word. That's why when Jesus rose from the dead, where was Mary? She was up in the upper room. No? No. No. Nearby. Where? In her house? With the apostles. No. No. She wasn't there on Easter Sunday. Do you know how many people were there on Easter Sunday? Ten. Mm -hmm. Judas already is dead. Mm -hmm. You're gonna get this. this is, you're getting good stuff. Judas is already dead. Thomas is boohooing somewhere. <laughs> He's reading the newspaper at the gate on the Jerusalem Gazette. And then he has the New York Times next to him. And Mary's not there. You know why Mary's not there? She knows. She, she doesn't want to be around death. Because guess who made the first appearance to her? Jesus. Mm -hmm. So why wasn't Mary at the tomb? She believed. Mm -hmm. She believed he rose from the dead. So why would you go to a tomb if you believe he rose from the dead? Mm -hmm. So guess what happened when Jesus rose from the dead? Now when Jesus rose from the dead, Acts chapter 2, was in the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. When you get raised from the dead one day, uh, and all your social security checks stop. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen to every single person here? You're going to be raised in the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine what that's going to look like? Can you imagine what Henry's going to look like? Can you imagine? <laughs> you know what God's going to say? <laughs> I mean, this is very, very good. And when you're, then you'll be lifted up. Mary wasn't there because she believed. Father, did she just believe? She knew that was going to happen? Yes. As she truly believed it. Yes. For Mary, for, this is another fact, for Mary to be the mother of Jesus, what did Elizabeth say to her in Luke chapter 145? Blessed are you because you believe that God's word be fulfilled. So what was Mary doing at the young old ripe age of 12, 13, 14? She knew the Bible already. That's amazing, isn't it? As a Jewish girl. As a Jewish girl. You know what's extra amazing about that is Jewish girls didn't go to a formal education. So Mary really learned a lot from Anna and Joachim. So, well, where was she growing up? Her parents were dead at the age of eight, so where did she get all this information? In the temple. And who probably gave her some more information? Joseph. Are you getting all this? You're crossing your T's and you're dotting your I's? You seeing how Mary really worked behind the scenes? And also, too, if, you, if you're interested, in, if, you, if you like some reading, interesting reading, uh, uh, she's up for sainthood now, Catherine Emmerich. And also, um, uh, you can read, I, I read uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori, 
the glories of Mary. If you, if you like to do some interesting reading. Yes. Yes, sir. It seems to be that's what you want to most believe. Amazing events in all history for a teenage girl to say that all generation can call me blessed and for that prediction to become true for 2,000 years. Yes. I mean, in and of itself, it's, it's so incredible yes. that it, it can't be anything but absolute truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, um, how many have interesting families? <laughs> Only one person? Now I'm going to tell you how to heal your I'm going to tell you how to heal your family tree with a prayer. It's in Daniel 9 and in Luke 1. Daniel Daniel 9, if you're praying for your family, if you see interesting things going on, what do I mean by interest habits that just keep going on? Anybody have people who really habitual lives? Drugs, alcohol, booze, sex. I mean, down, 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 pornography. Um, when you pray for them, Daniel 9, you confess the sins of your family. It's the direct opposite of Mary's Magnificat. It's the same content, but Daniel, who is before Mary, goes in the opposite direction. It says we have fallen, and now at the end, we go into God's mercy. Mary starts her Magnificat with God's mercy and says, the mighty will fall from their thrones. And then if you notice what Mary's Magnificat, she brings in Abraham. Interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now, why do we say all that? What's the background? Because this is what makes us believe. Now, remember, I shared with you a thousand times, is stop saying you believe in God, believe God. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. yep. I believe most of the people in this town believe in God, but that doesn't make us any better. I believe there is three world religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, and they all say they believe in God. Well, things aren't much better, are they? So I think they're getting even progressively worse. And all three world religions, Christianity, Islam, we've all killed each other. Did you know that? Every group killed somebody else. Now, for the first 300 years, 300 years, Christianity never killed anybody. Mm. Never. After 300 years, all the popes died of a, of, of a blood death. 300 years. And then, how many of you Constantine? And then we started picking up the sword, and we started killing people. That was a terrible thing we did. And we so said, how do we defend ourselves? They, they didn't have a group called ISIS or whatever else. Mm -hmm. And they're getting worse too, aren't they? So now all three world religions, and there was just another killing or a stabbing today on the streets of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. If you go to prophecyupdate.com. Christian or Jew, who did they kill? They, they killed two Israelis or stabbing them. So uh, the Temple Mount mm -hmm. is becoming very explosive. If you, go to, if you want to get better than the news, go to prophecyupdate.com. Yeah. And they will tell you what's going on in the Holy Land. What is that? Prophecy what? Update.com. They'll just give you the, new, the news piece. It's very interesting about what's going on in the Middle East. So if you want to get the, the, the flow of what's going on. And then I, I, got, I smile because two weeks later it's mentioned on the news. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. Two weeks you later. You read it two weeks ago and then it... And you, now, read it, you read it tonight and two weeks yeah. from now it will be on the news mm -hmm. here. Because they got decided they want to report it. Mm. Father, did you say that the first 300 years of the church that all the popes died of bloody death? Yes. You heard that expression. This Saint Cyprian said, "The growth of the church is the seed, the blood of martyrs." Mm -hmm. You ever hear that expression? You never heard that expression. Yes. Okay. So, for the first 300 years, every single pope died of blood death. That's why when you look at the first 300 years of popes. You usually have the word attached to them, Saint, 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 Saint. Why? Because they all died of blood death. If you die of blood death, you go right to heaven. And, for example, we have the we have the Korean martyrs this month. And when the Korean martyrs, do you know how many Christians were killed in Korea for the Lord Jesus Christ when that happened? 130,000 people lost their lives. During the Korean War? No, during, no, during the uh, persecution of Christians in the 1600s. So 130,000 Koreans lost their life. 
and, and by the way, when you kill a Christian with blood, you, you establish that Christianity is going to continue. Miss, huh, and they are a Christian country. They are, yeah. right. In yeah. fact, Korea had, did something which not very hard, easy to do. It was a Buddhist country, and now Christianity is the major religion of Korea. Yeah. South Korea. Yeah. Or not North Korea. Right. <laughs> by the way, on, on the uh, <coughs> South Korea, by the way, has, has just fired shots over the border to North Korea again. So it's, uh, I, I'm waiting to see how things will erupt there. You know everybody has their finger on the trigger right now. Yeah. So the Catechism gives us two people of faith. Abraham, he lived 1850 B.C. The Blessed Virgin Mary was born what year? If Jesus was born 46 B.C., let's do some math, go back about 14 years. Maybe Blessed Mother was born around 18 B.C. Okay? So she was born, and she died 72. Where do we get that? If you want to go online again, if you want to do some study, if you're, if, if, if you're curious. The Franciscans have a tradition. Anybody hear of the Franciscans? Mm -hmm. yes. There's a rosary out there called the Crown Rosary. It's 72 Hail Marys. Did anybody ever pray a Crown Rosary before? Anybody ever hear of a crown rosary? No. Did your mother ever want her to crown you before? <laughs> so it's called the crown rosary, and there are more mysteries of the rosary. So anybody in uh, the Rosary Altar Society should do, I mean, two more decades home. No, we need to eat. Let's do two more decades. <laughs> so that, that would be something. It, 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 uh, how many know the Catholic faith is very, very rich, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And how can you just settle for just this little bit of information, a five-minute homily? I need more. Do you need more? Yeah. Yes. Do you know, it kills me every Sunday. i got to tell you so much. I go, oh, there. It's time. Let me get off. And they, they're going to stone me anyway with rocks. So there are 52 more decades. Yes. So if you, if you do the, um, if you do the uh, go online crown rosary, and you get all the mysteries there. Did you ever go to Medjugorje? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. They believe momentarily Pope Francis is going to make a statement on it. Momentarily. Mm. On the Crown Rosary? No, on the Medjugorje. Oh, oh, oh about its yes. um, authenticity. authenticity or... yeah. Okay, next, uh, paragraph 150. Is this interesting or what? No. Um, then it comes to, we believe in God alone, if you underline that, uh, uh, paragraph 150. Faith is, first of all, a personal adherence of man to God. Um, and I always, you, you hear me saying to you, I don't like religion. I don't like religion because it's what we developed about God. Salvation, Christianity, is what God did to me. He opened my eyes to who Jesus is. So if you hear me say, I don't like religion, that's what I mean by it. You know, how many, how many have met a person say, of course, did you notice what we say to each other? What's your name? And number two is, where are you from? <clears throat> Did you notice we do that immediately? Where are you from? Mm -hmm. And then if you're in a church circle, mm -hmm. what church do you go to? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're with Protestants or Catholics, mm -hmm. what church? And because you're going to tell me what denomination you are, and guess what? I'm going to size you up what I know about that, and I'll go, oh, one of them. <laughs> right? <clears throat> See how we think? Yeah. See how we think? And by the way, the Catholic Church does not consider herself a denomination. We are the church. We're the church. Now, when Protestants hear that, they go. A couple of years ago, Benedict says the others are called sex, and they got he got some ire from the Protestant world when he said that. I don't think a Pope Francis will say something like that in the present trend they of things. They are sex. Mm. So, every, every single week, I told you in the United States, five new Protestant churches start. Five. How often? Every week, five new ones. How, often, how long do they last? Some of them, how many remember that? Do you remember that old man on television, Armstrong? Yes. He looked like death every time he appeared on... Uh, well, he died. Remember, if he went to restaurants, he would leave those magazines in there. He forgot the magazines. Henry never picked one up, that's why I could tell. 
he died. He started Armstrongism. So, and uh, he was telling all these things about God and they didn't come across. Harold Camping on, on, uh, on Family Radio. Does anybody know Family Radio is yeah, defunct now? Oh, it is. To Family Radio, Harold Camping was 90, 91 years old. He told everybody the end of the world was, was what, two, three years ago? Right. right. Remember a couple of years ago? Two, three years ago? It was May 21st. And he says, I made a mistake, it's October. It didn't happen in October. Do you know, because of what he said, people around the world found out about it, came out of hiding, mm -hmm. declared themselves as Christians and got killed. Yeah. So Harold helped usher people into eternity, literally. Mm -hmm. Because they came out and they got killed for saying, Jesus is coming, so it doesn't matter, so he's coming tomorrow, so you better get ready. And boom, they got killed and Jesus didn't come when Harold died. And Harold died, by the way. When Harold, when Harold Camping his, died, his radio station is defunct. His, his followers wanted their money back, remember that? He's gone? Like he asked for money for the end of the world, and then yes. people sent him money, he had millions. Yes. And then they, everybody wanted their money back. Yes. Because the world didn't come to an end. Well, I decided I'm putting an old cassock on, I'm going to sit in front of ShopRite tomorrow, and you throw <laughs> something in there, right? Okay, does everybody understand? So the church uses Abraham and then Mary, and then it says, a paragraph 150, as a personal adherence to God and assent to his truth, Christian faith differs from our faith in any human person. It is right and just to entrust oneself wholly to God. If you underline that, it's only directed to God and faith. Now, paragraph 151, we have a direct line to who? Jesus Christ, right? So when I preach, I, I, I've always got to preach Jesus. You always hear me saying Jesus every talk, don't you? Mm -hmm. Everybody shake your head yes. yes. If you're listening to me, I always mention Jesus. I, I, I one time a clergyman said, why do you always talk about Jesus? I went, duh, who else do we talk about? <laughs> Can you believe somebody said that to me? <laughs> you're always talking about Jesus up there. I said, <laughs> I said, I'll, I'll be right back. I had to run out to see what church I was in. I ran back in, right? <laughs> So, our focus is Jesus. And remember years ago, when the priest, he would always talk about Christ. Did you notice that years ago, the priest never said Jesus? Did you remember that? Did you remember that? Remember Fulton Sheen, the good Lord. Our blessed Lord. Remember that? You forgot that already. Remember his angel always watched the blackboard? You forgot that? Too. Paragraph 151. For a Christian believing in God cannot be separated from believing in the one he sent, his son Jesus in whom he is well pleased. God tells us to listen to him. The Lord himself said to his disciples, believe in God, believe also in me. And that's John 14. This is one of the only times Jesus uses the word faith. Believe in me. <clears throat> now, what's the first time somebody believed in the Bible? You cannot believe, really believe. Now, you're going to say you all believe, right? You all believe? You're going to say you cannot believe properly and truly unless you believe believe the enemy against you is not more powerful than you are. Mm -hmm. Let me push the button. <laughs> you cannot believe until you are convinced that the enemy against you is not stronger than the, your faith inside of you. Is that good stuff? Yes. Now, if you really believe, guess what would happen to you? You wouldn't have any fears. Nobody has fears in here, right? Very quiet in here. If you really believe, you wouldn't have any anxiety pills. How many know fear is what? Useless. Are you getting this? Lack of faith, you got it. Now, uh, Middle of page 100, paragraph 51. We believe in Jesus Christ because he himself is God. Underline that. He's God. What do the cults say? The Word made flesh. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has made him known because he has seen the Father. Jesus Christ is the only, underline only, one who knows him and can reveal him. Now, I get in trouble because I say that... Jesus is Savior. That doesn't get me in trouble. What word gets me in trouble all the time? Only. Only. <laughs> if, if you say a Muslim Jesus is my Savior, he'll be a little mad, you know, but you can walk away here in America so far. So, but when you say, Jesus is the only Savior of the world, whoa, what are you saying? He's not mine. And you're saying he's the only. So what are you saying about me? 
You, you just told me I'm a lost person. I don't like you. Can I tell you why the Jews are the most persecuted people on earth? The major reason? Number one reason? Do I know? Because they believe in 613 laws. It's a lot of guilt. You got it. You absolutely got the reason. So if I go around to you and I say, I believe in 613 laws. And these 613 laws are getting me to heaven. So what am I saying to you if, if you read in between the lines? What are you saying if I say, I believe in 613 laws? What are you saying to yourself? I don't, I don't obey them. So what do, you, what do you hear me saying in between the lines? You're not going to go to heaven. You're not, you're not, I, I'm, these 613 are going to get me to heaven and to God. Wait a minute. I don't buy that. We can't even pray for Because I like a pork sandwich. <laughs> How many ever had a pork sandwich? <laughs> How many like, did anybody ever eat bacon and sausage this past weekend? <laughs> you're not a good Jew, baby, let me tell you. Now, I'm a good Jew. I don't eat that. I have 613 laws, so when you talk to me, you're not going to like me because this is my way. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be affronted because the law does one thing in the Bible. It points out how weak we are and how sinful we are. And nobody can obey 613 laws. I don't care even if your mother Teresa is going to be difficult on you. Amen? So how do we get saved? By faith. You all have faith? I can't produce it in you. How many, how, how, does anyone know how to get faith? You get faith by hearing the word of God and so to speak, raising your hand with God and say, I believe that. Anybody believe that? As soon as you say, I believe that, you're saved. Isn't that amazing? That, now, paragraph 152, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Now, remember years ago we used to call him the ghost? Yeah. Wasn't that tragic? Now, here's what I believe is going to happen. Now, I don't know when Jesus is coming. Nobody knows the day or the hour. But if you put me in the corner, I just told you all, I told you before, pack your bags, baby. Pack them. We're leaving the planet. Okay? I don't know the day or the hour, but we need the Holy Spirit, don't we? And I'm so grieved that we didn't know who the Holy Spirit is. But I don't know the day they are, but here's what I believe is going to happen in the 21st century. I don't know how long we're all going to be here for. I hope you have our peace, joy, and prosperity. That's my prayer for all of you. But we need teaching on the Holy Spirit. And I believe God's going to raise up, if he should tarry in coming, I believe God's going to raise up mighty men and women, and guess who the team is? You're looking at the, the A-team. How many are excited about this A-team in front of me? You don't look too excited about this A-team. <laughs> And this A team in front of you is, believes in the Holy Spirit and needs to see the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why I always like preaching on the Holy Spirit. Here's what the catechism I One cannot believe in Jesus Christ, paragraph 152, without sharing in the Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit who reveals to men who Jesus is. So what's the job of the Holy Spirit? Opens your eyes to Jesus. For no one can say Jesus is Lord. And what does that mean to say Jesus is Lord? And which is coming very much to the front right now. That's in 1 Corinthians 12, 3. We're going to be asked very soon if you believe in Jesus Christ publicly and openly. Mm. And what are you going to have to say? Yes or no? Mm. And sadly, some of us are going to say no. Mm. We're going to deny him. I told you about my exploits trying to get out of Canada. I sent extra bottles of Canada Dry up there. Mm -hmm. They were persecuting me a little bit. They, they made me go three times through all these machines. I was ready to say to them, why don't you go catch a terrorist and leave me alone? <laughs> I had, you know that machine? You've been in airports recently? You have to put your hands over your head? Yeah. I had to do that three times. And then the man had to take his plastic gloves, because I, I, I Ebola free. And then he took his finger his, like this and it went right around. Did you have your collar on? When did they do that? On the next trip. Yeah. When? This was Canada. When? When was that? August. But, but they were Americans, right? 
when you were coming Canadians. back Canadians. Oh. When, I, when, I, when I left the United States, I sang God Bless America, Kate Smith, Apple Pie, Chevrolet, and Yankee Baseball. <laughs> Oh, I thought it was when you were coming back in. When I was coming, trying to get back into my own country. Yeah. They gave me three, t and then I met the other priest who was speaking at the conference I was. He said, oh, they gave you the runaround, too. Wow. Huh. The runaround, yeah. When you, in Canada, priests don't wear this anymore. Mm. Because they're anti-clerical, and they'll get, they'll get punished by the government. Wow. It's going to be that way here. 25 million people, a lot of them have totally abandoned their faith. Mm. So Jesus is Lord. So we're going to have to be, we're at the point, somebody said next, they invited me next year to go back to the conference and do another round with them. They said, when you leave Canada, are you going incognito? I'll go as uh, a Yankee baseball player or something, you know, have a bat on them. And they'll let me buy Jesus, Lord, except by the Holy Spirit, who searches everything, even the depths of God. Now, here are the characteristics of faith. Faith is a grace. Uh, paragraph 153. Uh, faith is a gift of God in the middle, a supernatural virtue infused by Him, given to us. Uh, paragraph 154. Faith is a human act. You gotta, if you believe something, you've got to act on it. Look at paragraph 154. Believing is possible only by grace. I can't, I can't make you believe. You can get an A in my religion test, but that doesn't make you a Christian. One day I went up to a young man who I taught in 8th grade, and his name was Henry, Henry. <laughs> and I said, Henry, he was a Buddhist. I said, Henry, you, Henry, are you, were you a Buddhist? I said, Henry, you heard the truth, of, uh, and you need to respond to it. Five years he came, he came, he was a freshman in Rutgers University in uh, New Brunswick, he comes up to me, Father Bill, how are you? What? Oh, Henry, Henry, I remember. Oh, Henry, there's a candy bar. Oh, Henry. And uh, he says, I'm in the RCIA program. He married a wonderful Catholic uh, woman. He has three kids right now. And I was teaching high school about two or three years ago. And I taught his son. Boy, things really, uh, 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 boy, things are, go full circle there. And so I, I taught his son. And his mother, who was a Buddhist, she came into the Catholic faith, too. I don't think the father came in yet, but he, he Holy Spirit, get him, get him, get him. So believing is possible only by grace. The interior helps of the Holy Spirit is no less true than believing in authentic a human act. Trusting in God. Now, there's a difference between believing and trusting. Well, let me give you the example. You're, on a, you're looking at an ice pond. And you say, I believe that water, uh, I believe that the ice on it is ice and it's very cold. And I believe it can walk, uh, it can sustain me. Okay, walk on it now. <laughs> How many here trust? <laughs> so trust is not just saying you believe, trust is doing the walking with God. So I believe you all believe. There's no doubt in my mind, everybody in this room believes. But I don't believe you all trust God. Don't get nervous, I'm not thinking of one person. Did you mean me? Okay. How many here really have want God's mercy? You gotta trust Him. But how many? How many? Let me prove that we're not trusting Him. You worry too much. Say so you need an operation. You go in there. Look, Doc. Jesus got this one covered. Amen. Look at me. I'm okay. One lady was being wheeled in. I prayed over her at a healing mass. How many ever heard of Spotswood? She screams at the doctor. Jesus and Father Bill said, I'm okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'm glad you used Jesus. Uh, but, uh, and guess what happened? The tumor inside of her just shrunk and the doctors just lifted it up. We don't know what happened. There's no tumor. It just balled up and we just took it right out. Wow. Way, way to go for Jesus. Amen. So how many here believe you really trust that you can really walk? Trusting in God and cleaving to the truth that is revealed are contrary ne neither to human freedom nor to human reason. Even in human relations, it is not contrary to our dignity to believe what other persons tell us about themselves and intentions to trust their promises. Paragraph 155. In faith, the human intellect and will cooperate. It's, it's your mind coming. Now, that we have a great saint. How many ever heard of Saint Anselm? Mm -hmm. Now, he says, paragraph 158, faith seeks understanding. 
I think I've apologized to you a hundred times. Here's a hundred one. I am so, I ask you all to forgive us for just giving you the catechism but not explaining it to you. I ask you to forgive us for not offering you more adult study in the faith. Because if you had more study, you would not have had the lives you would have. How many of you would have raised your kids differently? Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And how many of you had Father Bill check out every marriage? A lot of you would not be married today. How many know that, right? Uh, Henry, you would be married to her. You might be married. <laughs> So underline there, paragraph 158, faith is seeks understanding, and that's from um, uh, uh, number 33, St. Anselm. And you know this really does a great work in there, if you go back to uh, paragraph 157, 10,000 difficulties do not make one doubt. And I, I love, if you w really want to read somebody phenomenal, and he's up for St. Hood too, John Cardinal Newman mm -hmm. from London, right? Pope Benedict went there and really was blessing him, remember? Phenomenal man. It is intrinsic to our faith that a believer desires to know better the one, so I am so proud of all of you because you want to know your faith better and that he has revealed it. A penetrating knowledge will in turn call forth for a greater faith. How many want more faith? You've got to know what you believe. Did anybody learn one new fact already today? Doesn't that inspire your faith a little more? Like Blue Blessed Mother? Isn't that f fascinating what she did? I, I, I would want to go home and look up the nine pages. I want to read them. The grace of faith opens the eyes of your hearts to live a lively understanding of the contents of revelation. That is the totality of God's plan and mysteries of faith. Don't ever again allow us to say to you, it's a mystery. Go with me as we close here. 161, and put a big start by paragraph 161. We've got a freedom to faith. This is so good. I started because I get in trouble for what the Catechism says, but nobody really reads the Catechism. Ready? Believing in Jesus Christ and in the one who sent him. Who's the one who sent him? The Father. The Father. You're, you're very smart. <laughs> for salvation is necessary, underline that, for obtaining salvation. Now, did I write that? This is the Catechism of the what? The Catholic, Catholic Church. Church. I said this a hundred times and guess what? <laughs> they get mad at me. Do you want me to tell you what the Catholic Church says? Or do you want to hear what Father Bill thinks? Okay, so underline 161, put a big star by believing in Jesus Christ and the one whom sent for our salvation is necessary for obtaining salvation. You want to be saved? Since without faith is it impossible to please God. How many want to go to heaven? You've got to have faith. Can I give it to you? No. So when you say Joe X, Y, and Z died, and he didn't go to church, and he just died of a drug, drug overdose, and then you come to Mass and say he's in heaven, I went. <laughs> How many know that? How many hear that all the time? All the time. Here's what I want you to do. Go to a funeral Mass. Don't criticize, of course. The priest always says they went to heaven. How does he know? <laughs> Is there anyone in heaven? Nobody goes to the cooker. <laughs> Did you notice that? Did you notice we tell people at every funeral mass they all go to heaven? Did you notice that? Oh, they're in... And then when, when, I, when I go to Wakes, because this place, you drop dead. In the, I, I, I think you all should leave town. You all, people are dropping for a week here. Now. I think we're next. And, and you know, every time I go, they say, oh, they're in a better place. I didn't say anything. I just like... <laughs> Some enchanted evening. Next he says, to attain the fellowship of his sons, therefore without faith no one has ever attained justification. That means you can stand in front of God, nor would anyone obtain eternal life, but he endures to the end. You've got to live your faith to the end. So what do you hear me saying all the time to you? I'll, I'll tell you some of my madness. I say to them at funerals, but it goes over their head. I pray so-and-so in the box. I pray he, she lived her faith well in Jesus Christ. They don't hear me saying that. Mm. Then we know they're on the way to eternal. Now, mm -hmm. what do the people in the pew here? 
Oh, they were so good. Mm. Does that get you in heaven? No. no. But how many have been raised with the people in the pews thinking good people go in? So I want you to put a star by paragraph 161. Did you read it? Yes. 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 Do you want me to preach that? Or everybody goes to heaven? Now Jesus said the way, what, the way to separation is broad. The way to glory is no. Those are his words, Matthew 7. Now don't get nervous. I don't have the number on it. I pray that everyone in this world that lives right now is saved. But if one person in this world doesn't make it, that's the few. Okay? We will pick up there, going into the, we're going to start the I Believe, the 12 Articles of Faith. Good stuff? Good stuff.